Hi, today's video is going to be about the alternate C qualification with the uh, M16A2 rifle or M4 carbine. So if you are a soldier coming to a, a TDA unit or a, a civilian contractor working in a defense agency, you may be asked to qualify with a weapon. You may not have access to a 300 uh, meter range with pop-up targets and they'll send you to a 25 meter scaled silhouette target. And what that means is that these uh, targets are going to be 25 meters away from you, but they're going to be uh, different sizes. So this very tiny one is the apparent size that a um, type E silhouette would be at 300 meters. And this uh, head target is 50 meters, 100 meters, 150 meters, and 200 meters. Now the first thing we'll talk about is the uh, weapon that we're using today. This is a Colt AR-15A2 rifle that I've had since 1986. It's uh, very similar to the M16A2 rifle. Barrel is heavy, has a uh, one in seven twist. The only thing that's different is the rear sight is like the M16A1 instead of the uh, knob that uh, more current weapons have. Uh, let's talk about the uh, rules of firearm safety and we'll also post those. But the uh, important thing is uh, just make sure that your muzzle does not cover anything you don't want to destroy. You want to assume all weapons are loaded until proven otherwise. Keep your finger off the trigger until the sights are on the target. And you want to be sure, uh, sure of your target and what's beyond your target. So today uh, we're shooting into uh, paper targets that are stapled to a pallet. And behind them is a great big hill. So the bullets aren't going to go more than about 10 feet behind my target. So we know we're being safe. purposes of today we're going to have our sight on the long range sight and the reason for that is it has the smallest aperture and will allow you to center the front sight post uh, most effectively. The long range sight has a L. Okay so if you're not familiar with the sights on the M16 series rifles you have a uh, front sight post and then you have a rear sight that you just kind of peep through. So you're looking through this hole and what you want to do is you want to center the front sight post right in the middle of that hole that you're looking through and you're focusing on the uh, front sight post so the ring itself is going to come out of focus and then uh, for purposes of zeroing and then for also qualification and this is kind of how i figured out how to do this um you have the e-type silhouette here And you're going to take the front sight post, and it's almost going to be like uh, taking a pen and popping a soup bubble or something. You're just going to take that front sight post and touch it to the bottom of the silhouette. That's how I've learned to do it over the years. And then we're going to zero the round so that they impact right in the middle of this target. So uh, we're going to uh, fire a three round group for zeroing. So this is the NATO standard 30 round magazine. And we're just going to start out by putting three rounds all you have to do is just put them straight in the top of the magazine and we're going to go ahead keeping the weapon safe pointed in a safe direction making sure that the weapon's on safe we'll go ahead and lock and load three rounds Okay, so the rifle's sights were already zeroed for me, so um, like I said, I put my front sight post right here at the bottom, and the three rounds impacted here. Now let's say, for the sake of argument, that uh, my three rounds had impacted here. All right, I would draw like a little group and figure out where the middle of it is. So I'm gonna adjust the sights in accordance to this chart. So this rear sight windage means that I'm going to take the uh, knob on the rear sight and in this case um, this, these are for the M16A2 or M4 sights I would uh, rotate them 12 clicks uh, counterclockwise and it would move me over here and then I would take this front sight post and I would move that four clicks clockwise and, uh, and it would move me up so uh, for that reason uh, 
Um, you use this zeroing to make sure that your sights are dead on, and then you move on to the next phase, which is the actual qualification. Okay, so to adjust the sight um, for the rear sight, and there again, this is the M16A1 style rear sight. You can see there's a little uh, metal arrow here, and then there's a letter R. So that means that if we turn the dial this way, which is clockwise, we're going to move the bullet to the right on the target. So we're actually going to move the strike of the bullet to the right. Now, uh, these were rifles were made so that you could actually use one of the cartridges to make the adjustments. However, it's better to use a nail and then you can just make the changes by depressing this little detent. And for the front sight, and I've actually painted mine to make it stand out more against the uh, target. Um, there again, it was originally designed for the uh, cartridge to be used to press this detent. However, that kind of messes up the cartridge. Um, you see the letters here up and then there's an arrow pointing to the left which means that if you turn this clockwise you're going to move the strike of the bullet up and if counterclockwise you'll move the strike of the bullet down now if you're lucky the person at the range will have one of these tools for you and you can actually use that to depress the um, detent and then just turn the target turn the uh, front sight post more easily okay there are three phases to this qualification the first is that we're going to shoot 20 rounds from the prone supported position. So that means I'm laying on my belly and I'm supporting the rifle with the sandbag. The second phase is going to be 10 rounds from the prone unsupported position. So I'm going to shoot each one of the targets once instead of twice. And then the final phase is uh, 10 rounds from the kneeling position. And I'm going to shoot the uh, five closest targets twice from the kneeling position. Let's go ahead and we'll shoot from the prone supported position. Okay, so when you're uh, ready to shoot the next course of fire, the bolt will already be uh, to the rear because that's how the uh, M16 type rifles work. So you're going to go ahead and insert your 10 round magazine in and you just depress this little paddle, the chambers around and you're ready to shoot. Now we're going to shoot from the prune unsupported position now and there's a couple of different schools of thought on this and uh, I know some really great people that uh, are on both sides of the argument. Uh, the classical way I guess of shooting in the prune unsupported is you know, you put your elbow here, have the weapon up off the ground, and the rationale behind that is there's some people that believe that, well, you know, if you get the weight of the rifle on the magazine, it could possibly cause a malfunction. However, I've uh, hardly ever seen that. If you've got a uh, decent NATO magazine and a decent rifle, that shouldn't happen. So what you can do instead is get the rifle, use the magazine to support it, and then you're, it has a couple of advantages. One, you're more stable, and two, you're lower to the ground, so if somebody's shooting back at you, you're just that much lower to the ground. So that's the way we're gonna do it here today. Just gonna put one bullet in each target. Now, if I'd had a malfunction with this magazine, I would have thrown this magazine away and never used it again. But I didn't have a malfunction. Okay, so for the last phase, which is the kneeling phase, uh, from the kneeling position, it's kind of unstable, so you can't really be expected to hit the 300 meter target from the kneeling. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot the five closest targets. So that's 50, three 100s, and a uh, 150. Okay, so the way I uh, kneel is I'm um, kind of sitting on my heel. I do keep my, uh, what we call in the Bujin Khan, a live toe, because that way I could uh, get back up. But also for me, it's just more stable. Some people actually flatten their foot out. I'll keep a live toe. I take my elbow and just kind of rest it on my knee. 
muscle against kneecap and two in each target. And we're done shooting. Okay, the uh, final thing you're gonna do as you go along is you're going to uh, record your score on the DA form 5790R. The date of this one is September 2008. I believe that's the most current one. And you can download that off the internet. Uh, hopefully when you go to the range to qualify with your M16 series rifle or M4 carbine, you will uh, now be familiar with what to do and it'll be a little bit easier for you. Thanks for watching the M16 M4 Carbine Alternate C qualification video. We'll see you next time.